Welcome back to HomeWithDrows.net. My name's Andy. Um, we've had a request, or one or two requests, to take a look at Cyanogen Mod 7. Now that it said it's final release, I thought, why not? I'll give you a quick uh, glimpse of it if you've not seen it before. Probably most of you already have. I'm sure there's probably quite a lot of you that are using it right now. Um, I don't have like a massive understanding of the ROM, but I can show you the bits and pieces, you know, the reasons why I use it, for example. Um, I'm showing you it boots up just so you can see the kind of cool boot animation that goes on. This is on my uh, Nexus S, obviously. One of the main reasons people might use Cyanogen Mod because they don't like the, uh, well, the ROM that's on their current phone, I suppose. It might be an outdated ROM, so it might be Froyo or even a Claire, or it might have a horrible launcher on it, um, like TouchWiz or, well, you know, some people don't like Sense UI. Uh, I don't mind Sense UI too much, but I have now got used to using a, f a much more stock like Launcher Pro. So, this is the final release for the Nexus S of Cyanogen Mod. Uh, I've installed it, and that's pretty much all I've done. So, this is how you would see it once, once you've finished flashing. In the notes um, on our actual website, hemajoids.net, if you're watching this on YouTube, will be the link to get the actual ROM. There will be a few other links in there of things I will point out to you as we go. Um, so one of the first things you see asks about Cyanogen Mod statistics. I'm just going to say, sorry at this point, no. Um, I don't really know exactly what it involves to be honest, but they can leave me alone for the moment. So, you get this little funny fellow on the front. Who tells you tells you some uh, don't ask for ETAs. Nightly bills available on ROM manager. Do not submit to use. So this is a final release, but they do uh, they have like an automated system which puts together all the different components that different developers submit all the time, and it builds what's called a nightly. They're not necessarily all that stable because they're not tested. It's literally different people submit the 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 parts that make up the ROM. And I believe it's an automated system builds the ROM each night, which you can then download and flash onto your phone. Every now and then they produce release candidates, though. Uh, there were four uh, for the Nexus S. I think it's for the same for everything. Before the final release, which is this, uh, has come out. And as it mentioned, you can get to them through ROM Manager, which I believe comes installed because I don't put it there. A standard. Um, So you can read that. New features. Follow Kush. Um, oh, this is colour. I hadn't seen it like this before. Oh, goodness. So it does give you quite a lot of different options or things to do. Um, partition your SD card, for example, is a very good one. Fixed permissions. I found that one apparently is quite a good one if you're having issues with reboots or force closes. That's worth trying. Fixed permissions. Um, you can back, you can manage your uh, manage and restore backups from within this app. I mean, you know, it is, it is a very clever little app that is put together. This version it comes with Cyanogen Mod. There is a paid version, I think, and we might find that some of them would say, "Oh, you need the paid version for that." But it makes it very easy to do things like flash clockwork mod recovery. Recovery is the thing when you boot up, for me it's holding down the volume up and it comes to the thing where I can uh, flash ROMs, back ROMs up. And in theory, that can all be done from within this app now, rather than have to boot into recovery. Well actually I think what it does is it boots into recovery for you. I tend not to use it, maybe I'm a little old fashioned, I, I prefer to boot into recovery, see what I'm doing. Super user request, I'm sure most of you that are rooted have seen this before, it's just saying this app wants to use have root permissions so it tells me clockwork mod recovery is flashed successfully so we can download a ROM from here um, as you can see there's quite a selection of different uh, different ROMs so sign your models here at the top there but there's other ones the stock images NS collab blandroid so you tap on that and it gives you the different versions that are available uh, stock images and again there's the so it's a really, really useful app if you're the kind that likes to muck about with ROMs. There we go, and there you can see the four release candidates and now the stable release at the top there, which is what I'm running at the moment. Um, and there we go, look, premium version allows you access to the to the uh, nightlies. And as you can see, they're all sort of numbered. Every single night there'll be a different one. So on forums, like I see people referring to 
build 26 a lot when they're talking about battery life for example each each nightly has sort of a different uh, well benefit in some ways a different thing that's worked particularly well and strangely it can vanish the very next night anyway so that's run manager that's within uh, this itself the launcher that comes with it is ADW I'm not a big fan myself a lot of people like it I think you can get yeah I mean you can't even see if I add something to the bottom then you can see the uh, a little bit of how the ADW so you get used to fairly standard looking bottom uh, bar and then when you swipe up you get some more commonly used your more recently used apps um, obviously there's the app drawer which you kind of see through, I don't know if you can see that um, there are a couple of apps I installed myself just my sort of SMS backup things basically in case people do text me I wanted to still store it for me on my Gmail and uh, Rift Mobile because I couldn't log into Rift without it which I've been playing uh, so what else, what's different? Now one of the things that I kind of found that I couldn't really live without well not, you know, not literally but um, the reason I use CyanogenMod is the the widget you get in the notification bar so you can turn on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS change sound within your notification bar that is, and you, know, you can see Bluetooth coming on that's adjustable as well if I go into settings so I've got CyanogenMod settings there now as well as ADW launcher CyanogenMod um, you've got to remember where it is I think it's in the interface let's have a look yeah, notification power widget Oh, I'm going to show you real quickly while I'm here. Status bar tweaks. Show clock battery percentage. I'm going to tick that and now you can see I know a lot of people love that, which is true. Um, when I finish this video I'm going to be flashing a particular theme onto the phone which puts that there for me anyway. But I thought I'd show you this before I flash the theme. So, notification power widget. So, I've, we've got it selected, first of all. Hide on change. That means if I pull it down and turn Bluetooth back off, it's going to... Whoosh, it goes back up again. Can be useful. I used to always have it doing that, and then I realised actually quite a lot of the time I'm turning one thing off and another thing on, so I don't want it. Don't have to keep dragging it down to turn it, turn it off. You can change the colour, which is particularly useful. Like I said, I'm going to flash mine with a cyan theme, so I can change the. You can see now there, cyan. Um, then this is the most important bit, I suppose. You can select what different buttons appear. Um, flashlight, I like to have the flashlight there sync, I like to have to turn sync on and off, that's a huge battery saver you know if I'm not, if I'm leaving the phone in my pocket for two hours, why well, do I want to constantly check in emails and the calendar and all that kind of thing you can then also at the bottom you sort of select the modes that it's going to be, so flash mode normal high death ray, death ray, oh my god sounds a little bit aggressive doesn't it um, sound mode, so you can tell it what do you want it to rotate between and generally I would just kind of want sound and vibrate, so now when I say oh wait, did I even put that in? sorry, no, where, where's that there? Oh, I have, toggle sound yeah, there it is, my mistake so now I only toggle between either sound or vibrate, but I could have, as you might have seen uh, I could have had it so it toggled between sound and vibrate, vibrate silent and you know, all these different things basically, but sound and vibrate is fine for me so that's, and as you will have seen, sorry I didn't really show you, so now there's like six different things there including the, the torch, then you can see that come on the, yeah, behind the phone there look. so you know I love that, I've tried some of the ROMs and I'm, I've just missed that too much I love to be able to just pull down wherever I am, turn my Wi-Fi, my Bluetooth or my GPS on or off so that's um, one of the big sort of additions um, I showed you ADW launcher, the other useful thing now one thing I have done is I flashed, and I'm not sure how you say this, net netarchies, net netarchies. I don't know. There's a custom. There's well, there's quite a few custom kernels out there, and what these kernels allow you to do is to overclock your phone. In the past, you've needed to set CPU, but in CyanogenMod, and it tells you, be careful, you can mess up your phone pretty bad. Um, with set uh, with CyanogenMod, it lets you control your uh, CPU speeds. So. I've selected the set on boot, that's not default. Max CPU frequency you can see is 1.2. And if I go into that, there's actually more options. I could go even higher, I could go to 1.4. Um, 
there seems to be some instabilities on the Nexus S where some people struggle with running 1400 or freeze and lock up. And to be honest, I don't, I don't think I need that much speed. Um, I, I just stick to 1200. Um, you can change the minimum CPU speed. 100 is fine, so that means when it's not doing anything, it just clocks the CPU right down. And what you find is that kind of thing is obviously it's really helpful for battery life. Um, I can go 30 hours with sort of well, it's probably light usage, one or two hours screen on time. Um, yeah, 30 hours fairly easily. There are some other bits and pieces that are useful here. Lock home in memory, so my my home app at the moment being ADW launcher, it tries to lock it in memory so it doesn't have to keep reloading it when you go back to the launcher. Um, applications, this allows you to move the applications. You can set it to automatic, internal or external. Just leave on automatic, I don't even bother taking it. Phone goggles, I believe this is about when, um, yeah, so at a certain time, if you know you're going out drinking and you've got a bit of a reputation or you've got a, you know that you start calling, I don't know, ex-girlfriends, your boss or whatever when you're drunk at two in the morning, you turn that on it, in theory it stops you from doing it. I can't imagine I've ever been drunk to the point where I wouldn't be able to come and just turn that off. Right, now I'm going to ring them and tell them what I think. Um, sorry, that's me pretending to be drunk. It's very bad. Um, but that's there, all the same. What else we got? Display. Ah, yes. Is it in display that I was going to show you? No, yes it is. Automatic backlight. So, again, to me it always seemed quite obvious, and thankfully they did incorporate it into Silent Mod. You can change the levels um, for the automatic light. So, what do I mean by that? Um, okay, so the phone itself, it's got a light sensor, it detects how bright it is. As the room you're in, or the you know the environment you're in, gets brighter, it increases the screen brightness for you, so that you can still see it. If you go into a dark room, it lowers it down, so that you're not blinded by the screen. So what you can do in here, and I'm, to be honest, I'm not going to go through it all, I think I've done it in a previous video before, but basically you can change... Um, the different levels of the screen depending on the reading of the light sensor. And I figure maybe it is in here, maybe it's quite, no it's not actually that one, there's a more complex one where you can see different levels of light sensor reading and what you would want the screen brightness to be. Um, then there's a light sensor filter again so it's not necessarily, it works out like an average so because sometimes they flicker a bit too much when there's things going on. You can say, look, just take an average of the last 20 seconds and adjust the screen brightness. But that does take up, as I think you might be able to read there, it does take up more CPU. But that is a really useful um, a really useful part. Here we set whether we want the screen animations. And by that I mean that there. You can actually have it coming back on. If you saw that, I generally don't bother with the on one, just leave us the off one, but it's kind of cool still. Uh, I think I showed you, well, I didn't really show you everything, I suppose. Power prompt, choose whether there's a prompt after choosing to shut down or reboot. Now, if I turn that off, oh, I'm not going to, well, I suppose I can. If I hit reboot, it's just going to reboot. If I hit power off, it's going to power off. If I turn this on, and then do it, if I say reboot, it says, okay, what are you rebooting to? Regular reboot, recovery, or bootloader? You just hit OK and it goes goes there. It's kind of useful as well. Machine your status bar. Render effect. This is a little bit odd, but it's um, for some people it's a battery saver. If they're really, really low, they'll come and turn this on because it saves battery. Some people they prefer a screen like this in the dark. Um, you can set that as a widget as well, so you can hit a widget on your screen and it does that to you. Over scroll effect. So we get here to say what happens when when we try and scroll too far like that, so now you can see it's bouncing. We get to set a weight, if I think if we say heavy, see how far that bounces, if we go extra light, okay, it's doing exactly that. <laughs> oh no, let's go even further, sorry, so let's go back to extra heavy. Oh no, that's still, okay, so I'm not so sure what's going on there. I, did, I thought I'd worked it out one time, but maybe not. Okay, lock screen, within the lock screen as well, um, Widget options, always display battery status, I quite like that, so it will always now have battery status on the lock screen. Lock screen music controls, display song name and display album art, so when you're listening to music, your lock screen will have all that on it. You can have it always display music controls, no, I don't need that, thank you. Um, ooh, where is it? Style options, so you can change different... Uh, have a different type of 
of unlock slash it show you. So for example, let's see what this one does, lens. Oh, I haven't seen this one before. Oh, that's quite nice. Um, sliding tab. That's fairly familiar. Now you can set a custom app as well in here. And I'd like to set it as my camera. So I'm not too sure how it's going to work off. Alright, so this one's just done another another set of um oopsie. And it would be this one. Although it says messaging, it doesn't open my camera for me. It's a bit annoying you can't change the text. Um I'm going to go back to my usual rotary. And now what happens, that's a normal unlock, that's the normal sound off, and down is my camera. You can change it so that, um, oh, let's hide rotary arrows for a starter, you can change it so drag down for unlock. So now down just unlocks, and round from the left would, um, would open the camera. But I'm not going to do that. I don't know that way. Okay, delays and times out. Well, I like to actually have quite a bit of a bit of time once I've turned the screen off to be able to turn it back on and not have to unlock. As you can see, um, we had a look at performance. Sounds quite useful. You can you can set quiet hours to make sure it's always quiet at certain times. You can increase the volume of some default bits and pieces. Um, change the volume if things are playing. Oh, tablet tweaks. I haven't seen that before, to be honest. And I don't know what's there. And this isn't a tablet, so I won't worry about it just now. Um, the only other thing, where's it gone? It was profiles. I'm not sure where they are now. So when I hold down the power, I get to choose a profile. Um, so obviously that means somewhere in the settings, and I cannot remember where. Oh, what's that button? Um, no, I don't remember where they are, I'm afraid. I'm sure it can't be that hard to find, but I don't want to waste too much time looking through. But basically you get to change the different sort of messaging, noises, sounds, vibrations, etc, etc. Um, of Cyanogen Mod. That's pretty much it. I realise I've actually taken much, much longer than I thought I was going to, so I do apologise. I hope I didn't bore you too much. Um, all I would suggest when flashing ROMs, do not forget to back up your current ROM. Always back up your current ROM, because things can go wrong no matter how simple you think they are. So this is Silent Mod 7.0 on the Samsung Nexus S, and I also have Netouchies. 1.32, so I think CFS, because there's two, CFS and BFS, I'm fairly sure, CFS, but head to hemadroids.net and I'll pop the links in the bottom there for you to download those yourself. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer them, like I said, I'm not a professional, I'm not, you know, I don't know the inside out, I don't do any coding for this mod, for this ROM, um, I just thought I'd give you guys a glimpse of what it's capable of, really, so you could decide whether to give it a try or not. My name's Andy, check us out at hemadroids.net.